Hi everybody, my name is Tyler and I'm going to show you guys a screencast about Mongo and I'm also going to talk about using Mongo with Node.js and in particular I'm going to show you how to use Mongo directly, what it's about and also show you um, the low-level driver within Node.js which is called Node Mongo VB Native and on top of that is another API or library called Mongoose. And I'm going to tell you about all of those things. Um, I have a previous screencast where I talk about Node.js and in this screencast I'm going to basically continue from that. I'll, I'll use Ubuntu but most of the stuff I'm showing you is um, OS agnostic. It will work on any operating system um, except for the shell commands that I do. So Oh, in case you're curious about who I am, um, I am a software engineer. I used to work at Google. Right now I work at a company called AppGrok, and I had to learn, I taught myself Node and Mongo in order to build the web server for AppGrok. AppGrok does, um, basically it builds an iOS tool for uh, fast app iterations. Cool. Let's get started with um, installing Mongo. And... So I'm on Ubuntu right now. This is an EC2 micro instance that I'm going to work with. And because this is a brand new instance, I am going to do an update. And this is a good idea whenever using aptitude, apps get. Um, basically, it's going to refresh the local repo. And essentially, this is updating all of the versions of packages that um, aptitude is aware of so that when I install stuff I'm installing the latest versions. Great. It's done. So now I'm going to install node. I'll still install npm which is the node package manager and I'll st install mongo itself. And we'll be back when that's done. Okay I'll tell you a little bit about what mongo is. So the word mongo comes from humongous uh, I'm looking at mongodb.org right now, and sort of the main idea of Mongo is that it has JSON-style documents. JSON is JavaScript object notation, and it's different from MySQL or anything SQL-based in the sense that Mongo uses um, doesn't use tables. So if you if you're using like MySQL, then you have tables. So that has specific columns with types of objects. And Mongo has these things called collections. And a collection is has no columns and um, no, uh, let's say, no uh, predetermined types. So what that means is a, a document in Mongo might look like um, first name Bob and then last name Smith. And in this case, that's one rec record or entry in your database, but then you could have um, another document with the full name field, no first name and last name field. There's really no overlap between these two records in terms of what fields or columns there are, and that's totally fine with Mongo. And you can do queries based on fields, and it'll just return, if the field is equal, it, it's fine if the field doesn't exist in all of the in the, all of the documents. Mongo is also good at scaling in the sense that it'll uh, handle horizontal scaling and it'll handle replication. So basically if all the documents don't fit on one machine it's fine and if you really want to have backups to be fault tolerant so if like you have a, a redundancy in the system so if one of your machines fails the database continues to work live that's possible that's a replication set. Um, so that's what Mongo is, and now that we've installed it, I'm going to run a command that I like to use to take a look at what's running. Netstat LTP. The um, let me tell you what that command means. The options here: L is for listening processes, T is for TCP as opposed to UDP, and P is for PID. And, it, and basically, it lists all the processes which are listening on TCP ports 
and it's also going to include the the process ID of each of those listeners. So there's essentially it's listing four servers here. It's really only two processes, but um, apparently it's registered a total of four times with the OS. And Mongo, this is a MongoD process here, the Mongo daemon, and it's listening on 27.0.17 and 28.0.17. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you about each of those. The, the primary one is 27.0.17, and I can interact with that by using the shell that comes with Mongo. So I can switch to a database by typing use and the name of the database. So I'm going to name my database McFly. That's a cool name. And it never heard of that database before. Just because I type use McFly, it means I'm going to create it if it doesn't exist. Um, and then from there I can do things like I can uh, create a new collection. And I'm going to create a collection called Math Peeps. And a collection is like a table. Um, and I'm using the word math peeps for mathematicians. It's just a slightly shorter word for mathematicians. And I'll show you some examples of what I can do um, from the Mongo shell. I can insert documents. So I am going to add some um, records for mathematicians. This is sort of a JavaScript like notation, which is part of how Mongo works. It's very JavaScript oriented. Um, so I'm going to enter two records here. Uh, actually, I'll enter three. Why not? We'll put in Carl Gauss. He's another good math mathematician. And just to show the variety that's available, I'll put in another record where the fields are completely different. And so now what I can do is I can type in um, in the database in the collection math peeps I will do a find operation and this lists all the records or the documents in that collection. The ID field is something I did not add and it's basically an automatically created index um, for all documents in any collection. But other than that your documents will always look exactly the way that, you, that you've inserted them. So from this um, console I can also update things. So if I want to update a record, let's say I'm going to change Euler's record um, and what I can do is I can add a new field by using the set command. So um, what field should I add? Um, Let's see, uh, born, and then I'll make this an integer. And uh, I'm not sure if that's exactly when he was born, but close enough. If I list the contents again, now I'll see that that one record has been updated. I can also remove entries here. So the command to remove a record is just to do remove. And um, I type in a query based on... Um, any field that I want. And what I'm showing you here really just kind of skims the surface of what's possible because um, you can do, um, you can have like subfields, like each of these documents is a JSON object so that basically I could have lists and I could, within the objects I could have sub objects. Um, and so I'm not really going to get into that in too much detail right now because I'm just, this is a quick introduction. But everything in Mongo is based on these types of operations. Um, just to quickly mention other operations that are available. So I showed you set, and you can also do something like increment for um, adding to a numeric value. If there's a list, I can do a push operation, which adds to the list. Um, I can also do a pull, which removes, takes something off of a list. Um, there's also a pop operation, and um, there's a rename operation. You can look all of these up in the mongodb.org um, uh, documentation. Okay, cool. So that's an intro to the interactive Mongo shell. Um, now, I do want to kind of show you 
how I can work with the web interface. There is a web interface for Mongo that comes with it by default, but it is not really um, it's not really meant for editing the database. Rather, it's meant for keeping an eye on things. And by default, the security is a little bit high so that you can't log onto it from outside your current machine. And I'm editing the configuration file right now so that it's easy for me to use the web interface. So I just edited this particular um, Etsy MongoDB.com file. And I'm going to restart Mongo to make those changes effective. And then I'm going to open that in the web console. Okay, cool. Um, so I just edited out a cut because um, for some reason my restart didn't work. I have no idea why. I actually rebooted the machine and it worked. But just wanted to let you know that it, I did a reboot there. I have no idea why I had to do that. So um, this is the public DNS of my EC2 instance. It's going to be down by the time I publish this video, so you can go there, but it's not my machine anymore. And here's the port that is open for HTTP traffic by default, and this is what it loads. If I click on list databases, there's my McFly database, and um, I can get all kinds of information about the database by, um, you know, trying out different things. Here's like a log, for example, of uh, connections and other events related to Mongo. I don't actually use this interface, but it's good to know that it exists and how you can set it up because I think it's useful if you're running a production Mongo server and you want to keep an eye on it. Cool. So that's the web interface and that's the basic uh, Mongo stuff. Now let's get into actually using Node with Mongo. The first thing I'm going to install is node mongodb native which is what um, what is called a driver for mongodb it's basically an API or a library that lets you use mongo from another language in this case from JavaScript being run within node JS okay so that installed node mongodb and Let's write a sample JavaScript file that uses it, and I'll show you how we can use it. So first we're going to pull in the library by requiring MongoDB. And the next thing we need to do is actually connect to the database server. So I'm going to give it the name of the database, and I'm going to create a server object. And it's a local host object, and I can specify the, the IP and the port. And this is an option. Safe true basically uh, indicates that all my operations are going to have a an error callback by default. That's what that safe true means at the end. So now I've created this database connection, and it's not open right away. It just it's sort of like a lazily created thing. So I'm going to call the open function, and that has an error callback, uh, and we need to work with the database after the callback is called, because before that time, the connection isn't open. So now, within the callback, I'm going to assume that there was no error, and I'm going to open the collection math peeps, and then I'll have this callback which receives the collection itself. And within this callback, oh, hold on a second. I have to edit my vimrc file. Pause. Okay. Unpause. Great. This will be much easier to edit now. Within my callback, I can now do things like call find. And this find function is completely analogous to the find function that I used before. Um, 
So I'm going to end up getting this array of items back in this callback. And I can print them out. Um, now one interesting thing about using Mongo connections is that uh, the connection stays alive. So if I just ran this by itself, actually I'll just show you, it'll appear to hang. And node, basically node doesn't exit until um, there's no pending callbacks. And somehow Mongo seems to hold on to pending callbacks. Um, so I'll show you that it doesn't ex uh, exit right away. So it works. Here's Carl and, and Lenny, our two math peeps. But I'm going to have to control C out of that process to exit it. Usually that's not a problem because we're all building web servers, aren't we? So if you do want to make a script that exits, you can just call process.exit. And now if I call it, it'll complete when it's done. Cool, so that's how you can load an entire collection. But it's pretty useful just to load one item at a time. So let me show you something else um, you can do, which is uh, we can name a particular record or document. And that's using the find one function. And in that case, the item returned is going to be a single item. And I can print out what that item is. And um, what I'll do here is I'll, I'll exit once I'm done with that. In fact, I'll, just, I'll skip printing out the whole thing because I no longer want to do that. So there's retrieving just a single item. And um, just to give you a little bit more of an idea of what you can do from um, Node MongoDB native, you can also update things. So actually, let's do an update here. Um, let's And the update interface is almost identical to the Mongo interface. So let's update Gauss, and we will set, um, I don't know, let's see, oh, actually I think I know Carl's middle name, I think it's Friedrich. Um, oh yes, I need a callback. Okay, and so I'm going to move this stuff inside the callback so that when we do the lookup, it should get the new data. Let's see if that worked. Yep, there's our middle name. And if you just want to check things out from the um, Mongo shell directly, I can do that by typing these commands. And there's Carl Frederick Gauss. Um, Friedrich is in the actual database there, you can see. I'm not just making it up. Um, and so basically the same query and update and insertion, all that stuff is the same essentially between using it from Node and using it from the console. So that's an introduction to Node MongoDB native. And the last thing I want to show you is Mongoose. Now Mongoose is more of an object-oriented um, system. So basically you may have heard of MVC, which is Model View Controller Framework, or sort of like a layout, a way to um, build a, sort of an architecture for any kind of user-facing software, including servers and um, mobile apps, for example. So within that, there are model objects. And a model object is basically um, basically data plus behavior of data. So it's not usually a user-facing thing, but for example, um, one example I've worked with is a color. And you could think of color as RGB, but you could also think of it as hue, saturation, value. And these are equivalents, and you might want to do things like them by, um, let's say you might want to like blend colors or sort colors by a certain method. Um, you might want to uh, stringify colors based on uh, hex codes or um, 
maybe RGBA codes for um, CSS. So, so that's just an example of a use case where you have data mixed with methods that can manipulate the data or look at the data from different perspectives. And Mongoose is all about adding, essentially adding methods to your data so that you don't just think of it as just a document or a piece of data, but you think of it as a full-fledged object or something sort of like a class. Okay, so after telling you what Mongoose is all about, let's install Mongoose. Let's npm install Mongoose. And I'll show you an example of how we can use it. All right, so let's I'll start a new file, db2.js. Okay, so we're gonna pull that in by requiring mongoose. And again, I have to create a connection to my database. Um, but this time, the syntax is a little different. This db object is an event emitter, which is a basically an object that um, I can register event handlers with. And so the open event means that the connection is ready to be used. And once I'm here, um, I'm ready to create a schema. Now Node itself, I mean, I mean Mongo itself, does not use schemas, but Mongoose does. And Mongoose is basically a stronger typed um, uh, um, sort of like a system than um, Mongo itself is. It basically, it's sort of like Mongo doesn't know the types, but Mongoose does know the types because you tell it. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically saying anything in the math peeps collection is going to have a first name and a last name. And these are both strings. And um, I've just created a schema, and then I have to do one more step to create what's called a model. And this is, if you're coming from like an object-oriented language, this is sort of like creating a, declaring a class. I haven't added any methods to it, which, but I'll show you later how to do that. So now I've created a math peep model. And let me show you how to, um, basically how to create a new object. Uh, here's a good math machine. I'll do, do Andy Wiles. So here I'm going to create a new object. And this will be Andrew Wiles. He proved for my last theorem. And let me just pr print out what this guy looks like. Um, and we'll also save it to the database. So let's run that. Uh, again, I forgot about this. The process appears to hang. It's not actually hanging, but it's, I believe that there's a callback pending. Um, I think when the database connection is open that um, basically Mongoose is not going to let Node close itself. Um, so I, I just write server, so actually I don't really care about this problem except for these screencasts. All right, so there's the new entry, and um, let me... Let me check that it's in here. Yep, there it is. Andrew Wiles was added to the actual database. And what I just showed you is how to add a new entry from Mongoose. Um, let me show you how to load entries. So I'll do mathpeep.find, and then I can do the same type of query that I've been doing in the previous examples. And then I get a callback here. I guess I'll do a lowercase for the instance. And let's just print out what we get back from that. 
um, I'm no longer going to add that new entry. So now I'm just retrieving um, a single entry using Mongoose. Okay, so there it looked up that entry. Cool. And I want to show you one other thing with Mongoose, which is adding methods. Um, so, oops, let's see. Basically what I can do, once I have a schema, I can add things to the methods object. Um, say name will be a sample method that I can call. And within this um, function, I have access to the this variable, and that's going to refer to the specific instance of a math peep. So in this case, I'm going to say something like um, the names. I want to do something like the names Bond, James Bond. So this dot last name. This dot first name. This dot last name. Sort of a long line. Um, and to show that that's actually working, I'll call say name on the retrieved Euler thing. And there is a bug somewhere. Okay, cool. I had a bug in here. This was my fault, actually, um, as most bugs are. The return value from find is an array. Well, yeah, it's a, a list or array, whatever you want to call it. So in order to call a method on a particular object, I have to index into the array before I do that. So that was the mistake I made. And now when I run it, it says the name's Euler, Leonard Euler. Great. Um, so that concludes the what I wanted to show you. I covered the basics of using Mongo, the beginning Mongo native driver, and the beginnings of Mongoose. I want to leave you with information on how to find out more about this stuff. This is me looking up my bug. Here is the GitHub page for the Node MongoDB native driver. It's under the username MongoDB on github.com. Um, if you search for node MongoDB slash native, there's also docs from MongoDB.org directly, and those docs are really good. Um, the last thing I want to mention is MongooseJS.com. If you like Mongoose and you want to learn it, I recommend um, looking at their quick start guide and then looking at the rest of the docs. I hope that's helpful. Thanks. Bye.